In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Let us pray. O God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of the true light, grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the prophet book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed, as on the day of Median. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for the flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us. Upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God, the Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. May the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. That was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph too went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and the family of David to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in the region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, do not be afraid for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a savior was born for you who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord.
They shall call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Indeed, God is with us. It's interesting, many years ago, St. Augustine, he presented almost like a riddle the question he asked, where does God live? Where does God dwell? And the great St. Augustine would write, some people think God dwells in the mountaintops on the other side of the clouds. But scriptures don't say the birds are closer to God. Some would say he's up in the clouds. We might have images in our mind of what heaven would look like in the future. Think of mansions or what it might look like. And St. Augustine would say, well, not really. Scripture doesn't say that either. What the psalmist writes is, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. That God dwells close to the heart that is in need of God, that prays and asks God to be present to us, and God dwells and lives in that heart. As we gather this evening, the beautiful midnight mass, the birth of our Savior, as we come to adore that child, a mother and Joseph, and as we pray, we see God is with us as God was with them. For Jesus, born into a world in the simplest of ways in a small town in Israel, was born into a world with suffering, with pain, anxieties, questions, and into that world, that child revealed to each one of us, God is with you. God listens, hears our prayer, and always will walk with us on the journey of life. What a powerful, beautiful message for us who are gathered here in this year of 2020 has been a year with so much anxiety, so much stress, so much sometimes maybe people wondering, where is God? And we come with the faith that God has given us, and we pray, God, I know you are near. God, you've answered my prayers in the past. God, you woke me up this morning and got me here. God, you're going to see me through this day. A beauty of our Christian faith, believing that in the fullness of time, God so loved the world, he was born of a woman in a manger, is that we believe in a tender, loving, personal care of God for every one of us and all of God's children. I was thinking about that today for us as we gather here. For I know myself, sometimes I wonder, God seems so mysterious and beyond. Yet as we come here in this church with the beautiful music, the beautiful liturgy, dressed up well to praise God, God becomes so real, it's almost like he's touching our skin. And he wants to tell each of you here, each of you gathered in prayer, I love you, I hear you, I'm walking with you. How beautiful and blessed for us to be here today, to acknowledge that God is with us, God walks on the journey and will always be by our side. 
now as we profess our faith, we'll chant it in a special way, and a tradition of our Catholic Church is that when we get to the moment at this Mass where we say he was incarnate of Virgin Mary and became man, we take a moment and, and some can kneel, some can just bow your head, but we'll take like 30 seconds or a minute just in silence. And my invitation for each one of us is to open our hearts and say, Lord Jesus, be present and with me and my family today. I know you hear my voice. I know you walk with me. And I know you'll always be by my side. Let us now stand together and profess our faith in a God who is always with us.
Christ our Savior is born today. He calls us to pray for the world, for all those in need. He listens to our voice and to our prayer. So we dare to bring to him our needs. For the church, may we be a visible sign of God's love for humanity and of the continuing presence of Christ in our midst. We pray to the Lord. For all nations, May the promise of peace and justice for all peoples be realized, especially for those who live in nations at war or in conditions of oppression. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who struggle to find food, warm clothing, shelter, or employment, through our Christian desire to offer charity, May their needs be fulfilled until the day that the world is free from want. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For expectant mothers, may they receive the health care they need and look to our blessed Mother Mary for support as they bring new life into the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the end to the pandemic and for all those separated because of the risk of exposure. May God comfort his people and make his, patience, make his presence known in our attempts to connect and care for one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, and for the repose of the soul of Gail Sofiria Martin and Richard Fuentes, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs listed in our parish intention book, and for those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, born in the simplicity of the manger, you come to us and listen to our prayers. Increase our faith and our trust in you. Be with our world a light to all peoples. We pray in your name, Jesus Christ, for you are our Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Please pray with me, my sisters and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in the mystery of the word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without hand we hear claim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, 
our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope and Brendan our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassionate, merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world, all that is good. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's nativity may through an honorable way of life become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. For the final blessing, on behalf of Father Gary Yanok, the rector of our cathedral, and Father Dalton Irvin, parochial vicar, uh, the staff of the cathedral, wish everyone and their families a blessed, joyous Christmas and Christmas season. Thank God for all those who help with this beautiful liturgy, our choir and music, uh, our servers, our lector, our two deacons deaconing for the first time at midnight mass. Uh, thank God for all those who help uh, celebrate worthily uh, the glorious birth of our Savior Jesus. So as we have a blessed Christmas for all of our families. The Lord be with you. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. that the great joy of his son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel. Fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor, and make you sharers with the church in heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God come down on you and remain with you forever, the Father, and the Son. <laughs>